<laughs> yeah. I feel like we're back. Welcome <laughs> to the Show Me Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not country. Yeah. It's a little bit like Bad Molly Every Crew. I don't know. Joins oh. Jeff and discusses you know? how images tell yeah. stories. I do feel like we need new what metal one season. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just new metal in brackets. New metal. Like new with metal. that weird dot, are you? I'm not. I'm corn. The umlaut? We're yeah. new metal. Yeah. <laughs> But we're not here to talk about rock and roll today. <laughs> My name is Jeff Livingston. Welcome to the Show Me Podcast. And I am here with the delightful Kristen McNicholas. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. And for those of you who do not know Kristen, she is a photography editor. And uh, she has a fantastic eye for what works mm-hmm. and doesn't. She's also a bit of a shutterbug herself. And uh, in her past life, she's worked in that <laughs> geo as well as several other organizations. And we're here today to critique the Sony World Photography Organization because they're already soliciting, I believe, uh, for the 2020 show. And Mm. I think that's due in March. And uh, I've always seen this and I've always kind of stayed away from it for like stupid reasons because I don't photograph Sony and I have that whole like BS thing. But it's a pretty prestigious award. And uh, I I thought I'd talk about it with you. So before we get going on that, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be talking about this because contests can be a huge jumpstart for a lot of photographers. And to preface all of our critiques, I think we're both super excited for anyone who did win or plays because this can be a huge moment in their career. So take all of our critiques with a grain of salt, but know that there's people looking at this stuff now. Right. And I think like that's actually an interesting point. Maybe we could start there. I mean... this stuff is very subjective, right? Absolutely. So subjective. You, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, it's kind of hard to sum up how easily someone else can see something completely different in the same photograph. Right. And, and both professionals, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So it's a lot of personal uh, uh, inclination comes to it. For sure. So I, I personally... Am a, deathly afraid of awards and I tend to only submit to local ones because I'm a, a wuss. So, but I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Um, so with that, let, let's talk about this very prestigious photography award, the Sony world F- photo uh, galleries and uh, what they awarded in 2019. And uh, you know, first thing first, I, I mean, I, we're going to start with Frederico Borrello mm-hmm. who won the photo of the year, I believe. And uh, my, my first thing is when I went to go look at the photos, I had a very um, kind of crazy idea of what the Sony Awards were going to look like. And I'm just showing Kristen what these looked like. So that's why we have the PC and I'm looking away and all that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, had a, I had an inclination of what his stuff was going to look like and what these photos were going to be. And uh, I, I, I was disappointed, actually, in a little bit. Um, but before I, I tell you what I thought, well, let me tell you what I thought because I'm the amateur and not a photo critic. <laughs> First of all, like I looked at it and, you know, the desaturated thing, that's cool. I actually appreciated that. I was uh, anticipating like Sony, like HDR everywhere. And, and it was very photojournalistic in some ways, but everything was dead centered in the gallery with the exception of one photo. And uh, so with that in mind, I just was kind of wondering, like, you know, is it me? I, I, I'm not sure I'm seeing a story. It just feels like, mm-hmm. wow, I know how to use a camera and take a desaturated, dead-centered photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt a lot of the same first impressions as you did. I also want to note that I, this is the first time I've really taken a deep dive into the Sony Awards in general. And I liked his aesthetic. I liked that everything seemed like it was from the same project. I right. think that can be a photographer's downfall sometimes as they want to make a just a, a body of work. And sometimes they just don't seem to line up. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's part of the struggle. And that's, um, you know, it can be really hard if you're not working with mentors or editors or even just other photo friends to help you bring it together and to curate it in such a way. Um, yes, everything was in the center. Everything was also, I think I remember it was like kind of square more often than not. So that it can be 
I think getting the rule of thirds in a square crop is even more difficult because then you're trying to figure out where the balance is going to lie. Right. My, um, I'm a stickler for composition. I liked that all of his compositions were clean and very intentional. I didn't feel like, with the exception of one photo, everything seemed like it was supposed to be in its place. The photo that I was most disappointed with was the portrait because it was gorgeous. The light is beautiful, shining on her face. She looks strong. She looks... Um, I don't know who she is. Forgive me for not using names because uh, there are no captions right. to be found anywhere, which I have a, a pretty big problem with. Right. But this woman in the portrait has a beautiful aqua background. She's wearing a pink. I think it's a, it would be considered a sari. The light is just absolutely gorgeous, but her head is cut. Right. From like right above Weird her. Weird crop, right? Yeah, but we see a lot of, you know, not a lot, but we get a lot of space beneath her face. And I am just very, (laughs) (laughs) I I am not a fan of when like any body parts get cut off unless it's intentional. You can do some kind of weird, fun stuff when you start to cut limbs and such off with the edges of your frame. But this just felt very accidental. And I don't know if it was. And we don't know what they did to it before they put it into the gallery. So there's a lot of caveats, right? Yeah. So that's what I, I think with any portrait, I want to see the whole of the person or I really want it to be intentional to like right. obscure parts of their face or whatever. I want to see all of them, even though like it doesn't have to be like a mug shot. You know, right. I think we misuse that word a lot in photography, sure. like call portraits. Well, that's shots. what I do to people, but you right. Know. <laughs> but it's hard because there's a, a, you know, a different connotation with something like that. And this felt, half done right and yeah. you know what the other thing i i felt and again this is just me uh and, and not being a photo critic but like here's this person it's this the the primary image it seems like it's the and, first image it's there's the first thing you see no context in the other photos for why i'm seeing this person so to me it almost felt like a random street shot right rather than like mm-hmm. here's uh this woman her name's jane let's just say and here's Jane at uh, in her village or at work. Uh, this is Jane with her family. This is Jane in her plight, or whatever it is. There was no narrative there. It was mm-hmm. just like random, you know, a day in the life of us. Which you know, I mean, there's something to be said for that. But at the same time, you know, when you usually see great photojournalism and photo essays like that, they they do seem to have that narrative bend to them where you can. At least see elements of a of a thread that goes across all the photos. Her portrait seemed very out of place, and I don't know if the way that we see the gallery on Sony's website is sequenced, because to me that story in the artist statement at the beginning, the story was supposed to be about climate change, farming, and how it's affecting small villages. Starting with a portrait doesn't make sense to me because. It's out of place. There's no context. We don't get captions, which is, again, I'm going to talk about that a lot because right. there's it, no context. Maybe if no she help. was in the middle somewhere and we have context for who she is, it would make all the difference, but there's no context. Right. Okay. So we're, we're aligned on that. <laughs> and by the way, I do want to clarify before we get too far that, uh, you know, even though I kind of bash Sony, I've used Sony's before. I've taken some delightful photos with Sony's. We don't talk equipment very often on the show intentionally, mm-hmm. um, but I did want to just say that if you have one, don't feel bad. They're delightful cameras. You really can't buy a bad camera these days. That's true. <laughs> it's just like they're so, all of them, they're so good. I mean, it's really like asking a photographer like, or a chef like, man, that was such a great meal. What kind of knife do you use? Right, yep. Um, on your shot, we w- which was National Geographic's photo platform right. that is on Instagram, um, you, uh, the other, the other editors, and I would always say that the best camera to have is the one with you. Yes. Which for me is almost always my phone, but it's still with me. So. There you go, right? <laughs> so, so the next category we're going to dive into is the professional brief. I have no idea what brief means. Nope. Um, I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> right, and it wasn't explained on the site very well. But I actually, th- I was kind of attracted to that for some reason because I felt like. Um, that might mean that you're like in one place for a very short period of time or you only have a limited opportunity to shoot something or you only had a limited amount of frames to show what you were going to talk about. Mm-hmm. So whatever that is, I kind of like that challenge aspect to it. 
And the winner was Rebecca Furnell, and I'm going to show you the photos. Uh, yes. And we're going to let you go first this time. I Oops. loved... Oh, Thud. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I loved these photos, but uh, the editor and me only saw four pictures that are from the backs of people. And... Um, Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could have done with one. Maybe two, but this project, I mean, the photos and the moments are beautiful. And reading her um, artist statement, I felt like I was able to then see what she was doing, piecing together in the visual narrative throughout each photo. I, like, I was able to detect the visual strain through each of them. But there are multiple photos that are just the backs of people. And sometimes those can work. I don't think you need four of them. And I, the ones that she was out in front, in front of the action, right. they're gorgeous. They're lovely, quiet moments. There's stillness in them that I think is really beautiful. But I then I just got distracted that the same visual tool was being used in multiple photos. Yeah. And they were all kind of street scenes, it seemed like, mm -hmm. right? Little day in the life slices. Right. I almost felt like in some cases, I, I kind of thought that it was good street photography. So let me just say that. Um, and then uh, I'm pulling up the next one while we're talking. But I also thought like there were several of those where like the screen could have been filled a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of doing that too all yeah. the time. I kind of like these epic scenes and uh, uh, they kind of make me happy. But at the same time, sometimes when you're, you're shooting character images, particularly street you almost want the person to dominate the photo in some way or like your eye should go right to that mm -hmm. person. If they're small, they should still go to that person. Yeah. Some of the, her photos, I felt like I wasn't sure where I was supposed to be looking to start. Um, and it could have just been for the, a better use of her composition, negative space. If you are using negative space, you want to use it really thoughtfully and it felt rushed in some of her compositions. And I think if she slowed down a bit, she might have gotten exactly what she was trying to achieve right. instead of like the almost. Yes. Uh, the other thing that I'll, I want to know too, which was surprising to me again because of the winner, when I think of, again, and it just goes to show you the stereotype in my head was wrong, but that the Sony version of this would be like very dramatic in some way. And, mm -hmm. and it was very mm -hmm. subdued. It was very tasteful the yeah. way the... The, uh, the tonality and the contrast was uh, presented in those monochrome shots. Yeah. And now we're going to talk about Toby Binder, who was, uh, who was one of the people that got a recommendation but didn't place. Mm -hmm. So he just got an honorable mention. And his Belfast project, this thing, or, or her Belfast project, I don't know where Toby's a man or woman. I'm not sure either. Yeah, because I can go both we'll ways. We'll say they. That, they, yeah. that's right. That's the word this year. So they, their uh, <laughs> gallery. And, this is awesome. Like to me, I was just like, I saw this. I was just like, why did this win? I mean, wow. This you know? work is freaking stunning. I, um, I wrote in my notes that I was, uh, a contest judge for the MPPA quarterly picture editing contest. And for a quick background, that's for newspapers, photo editors who are MPPA members to submit their editing work from the past quarter and it places and it's, it's like a really nice way to kind of show the behind the scenes of how some of these picture stories come together. But, um, the Washington post placed first place in our online photo gallery because this work by Toby was in an insight blog and me and the two other judges, both photo editors, Caitlin Dolan and Esla Attar, the three of us agreed this was stunning. The right. visual variety is gorgeous. The contrast. The contrast the is perfect because black and white is tough too. You can go way too hard in the blacks, way too light in the whites. And then suddenly it just looks like pop art sometimes. Right. So, I mean, Toby really hit the mark on awesome black and white at a technical level. But even looking at this, we have a quick six photos. Compositions are all different. I don't feel like I'm looking. There are two similar photos that are, the moment is very similar. There's two different children running through the frame, but even like the backgrounds are different enough that I, I can be a little more lenient on that. But then otherwise they're using 
totally different situations to illustrate what's going on in Northern Ireland. And I haven't seen a project like this get momentum. So I'm really excited that it is. Um, and I'm always excited to see work that I've already seen elsewhere pop up again. But I thought this could have placed. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most, most definitely. Right. Um, so before we continue with our second half of our critiques, of the critiques, <laughs> our meta critique. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are you thinking of the awards now at this point? You know, what does your mind say? I think they're beautiful. I, I have a lot of feelings about contests and, you know, there's been a lot of conversation in the past few years about contests having rights grabs. I did not read about Sony, so I'm not even going to, you know, go into that. Um, yeah, I feel like so, I, you so know, he's... there's a lot of like controversy around contests in general, and I think it's hard to come into them with a critique, knowing that there's probably a lot of really awesome photographers that didn't place as well. That it might have just come down to who happened to be the panelists. Which, as someone who has been on multiple contests judging panels, it really is so, so much based on your opinion and what you feel towards that I could have chosen a completely different, you know, place and honorable mention. And that <laughs> almost kind of means nothing, <laughs> but it's also, it's so exciting for these photographers. And I can't yeah. congratulate them enough. Like I hope that this is another one of those things, an accolade that they can put on their website, they can talk about and they can really get a boost from, but I just kind of can't help but wonder what my critique of contests in general we're going to talk about being, that. We're going to get into that. Yeah. yeah. I think they're, these are all beautiful. I might have placed them differently, but. You can live with them. I can live with it. That's cool. <laughs> all right. Cool. We're going to talk about landscapes because I feel like that is a home run Sony category for sure. Mm -hmm. And the first one we're going to talk about is, of course, the winner, which is Yan Wang Preston. And I did kind of like a, I was a bad boy on this one because there were like 10 images in the gallery. And I actually thought the best images were the last four. Hmm. So I grabbed them. <laughs> Whoops, there goes my mic. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> cool. So this one, I will start by saying that it, I am not a landscape photographer. Right, so and this it had was, a crazy title too, right? Like <clears throat> Beyond the Colored Land. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, something like that. And you're not a landscape photographer. I'm not a landscape photographer, so I went into this trying to be very open about composition and what works with landscape because I know that I'm like, oh, it's just a straight line across a straight frame and it's land, you know, like I tried to be open minded about it. So I think with this, especially because artist statements were important, this was such an important story. And there was so much visual redundancy that I, I was like, I can't believe that there are three photos that look exactly, <coughs> excuse me, there are three photos that look exactly the same to me. Um, <coughs> I would have, sorry, I would have added the one that had the, uh, there was like a building yes. in the background. I think that was, that was such that a stand good, out. yeah, that stood out because it was one of the only ones that had a little bit more of a human element right. and landscapes are aggressively not human element. Right. <laughs> like, um, but they relied, even like the two photos, the two first photos rely so heavily on that green background yes. that I'm like, we needed one. And then there was, a, it looked like a triptych. I honestly thought when I first saw it, it was a triptych that are, it looks like quarries almost that mm -hmm. have the green on the background. Like a limestone almost. Kind yeah. Of thing, yeah. And it's beautiful, but we didn't need three. Like you got to pick the best one of those three because then what you're doing is you're just filling up. We talked about this a little bit. Yeah. Like when you're submitting to contests and you have the opportunity to do a portfolio, you don't want to fill it. Right. If you feel like, even one of your images is weaker, whatever weaker might mean, that is going to pull down your whole submission. Right. So when I was looking through this collection of photographs, <coughs> very sorry, um, when I was looking through this collection of photographs, I felt like there was a lot of redundancy in the submission in total. Right. So... Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the Ogilvy ad that was so famous, uh, which was for the Volkswagen bug, and it had one mm -hmm. word. And it said lemon. 
Ah, yes. Right? And yes, everybody that's studied communications knows that ad mm-hmm. because it's just so uh, outstanding in the way it was. And, and maybe this one, they could have gone, gone away with four or five images. Mm-hmm. And I did think that the punchier stuff was at the end. I saw those three redundant mm-hmm. images. <clears throat> my, my only thinking on that was like, that works if you're just trying to show a desert. Like, this is the desert. Right. We're still in the desert. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, we're in the <laughs> desert. You know, but nobody wants Groundhog Day. Yeah. And so, this story had human elements in it, too, about how they're building these towns. I, I understood it as kind of out of nothing. So I feel like that's when you want to have those little elements of humanity in there. And those three that were the same did have those, but I can't, I can't get past that there are three photos that – looked almost identical right and as is the habit of our critique here we're going to go to one of the notable but non-placing category uh photographers and these are all the professional categories we're going to hit the open one in a moment but uh, uh wh- what's this young lady's name again it's emma, emma. barrera emma right? emma, that- emma 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 yeah right so this is what I expected when I thought Sony mm-hmm. World Photography Awards. This mm-hmm. I expected gallery after gallery of eye-popping, saturated, incredulous landscapes, right? Mm-hmm. Like, wow, this is astrophotography, right? Yeah. Like, like if NASA popped one of these bad boys out, I'd be like, totes. But at the <laughs> same time, I'm like, yeah. God damn, you cooked the crap out of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I've seen a lot of astrophotography and it's it's beautiful, but I've seen so much of right. it. And I also know not even necessarily from my own experience, but from astrophotographers and people that love their nightscapes, that's their thing, that's what they do. That's their jam. I know that not all of that is necessarily quote in camera. No. And that's when I kind of, when I'm like this was supposed to be Sony Awards. So yes, you made it on a Sony. Right. And I, I'm not faulting them for... Or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. They don't maybe qualify. It I, they yeah. Don't, they don't, it's just branded that. It's kind of like... Right. It's the World Photography Organization. Right. But if you have a Sony, you'll probably get an extra point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I think these are beautiful nightscapes. I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. So I didn't... It's sad to say I didn't see something necessarily special in them. Right. And it feels so mean <laughs> to say something like that because They're these photos mean the world to someone. Images. They're like, gorgeous. This is calendar quality imagery. Right? Can't emphasize enough how much I want one of these is like a monstrous print on my wall. Right. But I've just seen so much of it. I can't help but wonder what were the other and the other landscape uh, galleries that placed also had more of a story to them with these ones they were talking about this is what you get to see when you don't have night pollution right but since they mentioned it in their artist statement that's when i do want to see one of these long exposures with something that is polluted by light yeah so you can see this (laughs) i think we all do right but you know you're seeing these gorgeous landscapes i want to see how we are sullying our nightscapes with light pollution not just what we're all what we're quote missing out on right and i think that would have been an interesting route for them to go down to include what's new york city's nightscape look like when you do a long exposure and it's just this billow of yellow light at night where it probably almost looks like it's daytime and you're like no it's actually made at 11 30 at night in the middle of winter when it's dark you know right um i think that could have been a fun way to change us up a little bit and not just be more long exposures at a national Tree. park right yeah. yeah and what's also a little tricky about those kind of things is i wonder how long the exposures were because star trails it, star trails and when you just start to see the milky way still i know i mean we already know they're doing they have multiple photos right there's, they have multiple exposures, there's almost so. no way that yeah. any I'm, camera can do all of that in one yeah but then i wonder how many layers we're working with what like were these all made at the same time you know was it bracketed how many shots were bracketed so it's basically hdr so you know i've made a few of these photos before (laughs) 
because uh, I'm like, you know, Mr. I don't know what I am kind of photographer that just takes whatever is interesting. There's Look, nothing wrong with that. There's the yellow Ferrari over there. Hey, man. No. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I know you can cook the crap out of those and that's mm-hmm. how you get the color out. Or you can you can make a faux image. I, I don't know what the processing was on these. Yeah. Uh, but it, it just struck me as something that I've seen a lot of, particularly on Instagram, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, they were gorgeous, gorgeous images. And if, if she was able to get these in a almost raw state, hats yeah. off to her. But yeah, even, yeah, seriously. Even NASA cooks the crap out of their photos. Because so you have to. And, you have to yeah. and especially coming from a, in a photojournalistic um, aspect, when you're like for a night photography photo, if you can see this stuff with your eyes, then cool. And I also understand that that's also the point of night photography is to bring bring it to life. Bring your dream to life. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. I I it's just when a contest setting. I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't look at the rules. I don't know if they check raws. I don't know what they do with it. But it's just kind of interesting. It seemed a little. Yes, process. Ordinary. Little ordinary little process. It's gorgeous. It's very weird to say these images feel ordinary and also gorgeous. But I think when it comes to contests, I would expect a little bit of a higher caliber out of it. Catherine Highland, uh, another one that plays in the landscape category. Your turn. Oh, I started last time. You go first. Oh, I got to go first? Yeah, you go first. All right. (laughs) So Put I put you on the spot. I love these. Mm -hmm. Um, and And I actually thought this was probably, for me, and this just goes to show you how subjective this is. This would have been my award winner in that category. And the reason why uh, was, first of all, it's clear that they allow you to do some sort of editing. Um, yes. It, but the tonality of these is very, very unique. The exposure is actually kind of overexposed and it's intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that that fits this artist statement, the the view of the, the project. And I thought that there was a clear vision. I thought it was... Um, unique and that to me was what i really thought was special about it was not only was it eye-popping and interesting in spite of what i would say or uh, maybe some atomic toning uh that seemed a little bit abnormal beyond glacial almost Mm -hmm. and uh the the saturation and the editorial twist this person had something to say and she said it and she said it well Mm -hmm. and that to me was standout unique it wasn't poppy it was uh it was artistic it was tasteful. To me. Yeah. yeah and so i was like hats off I, I don't know if i would do that but i just thought wow this is stand out and it made me think so that that was my take the uh <clears throat> the hack in the corner <laughs> <laughs> um i agree these this one was my favorite um i loved this alien otherworldly aspect to the colors of these lakes i know that these lakes can be these colors right but they do pop a lot, especially against the white. Is it snow? Right. Snow. No captions, so not totally yeah, sure. Yeah, I thought what, it was Bolivia. Almost, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and almost kind of looked like salt flats at first when I saw it. So I was like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Right. And then went to the artist statement and no captions. Um, I like. She definitely did what I would have expected with the landscape, where it's like straight horizon line. <laughs> It's a U2 a few, album. <laughs> there, there are definitely three photos that I can see where it's like the horizons in the same spot. I would have loved for her to change it up and do something where like one of these lakes has like a gradient. I don't know if it actually looks like that. I'm going to just believe her naively that that is what it looks like. Show us. But why not make like a just a photo of the lake with no context, just have that gradient, like that really awesome creep, kind of creepy gradient. And that can be one of your one of your photos. I would like to see something like that as opposed to there's like a a grassy landscape, very flat landscape with a beautiful gradient sky. But I would love to see something like that instead. Sounds good. By the way, thank you, Panama Carlton, for your awesome work. Always. Woohoo. Panama rocks. Our consistent and always present producer. I think what we're going to do now is the open gallery. The open gallery, for those of you that don't know, is for amateurs. Uh, most of the stuff we've been talking about is for the professional categories. This is where anybody that's got their <coughs> Sony a7 III could uh, like submit or whatever camera. it is. It is a good camera. But uh, just like all of them are now these days. Party line. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I thought some of these images were just like 
I thought they were better than some of the pro stuff. I mean, of course you would think that, right? But at the same time, they also demonstrated kind of what I did expect to see in the awards, which was a very uh, crunchy, very processed, mm -hmm. I know how to edit a photo in Lightroom mm -hmm. look. Some of these bordered almost editorial to me, which is great. It says a lot about these photographers that are quote amateur level, but right. they are much better than I think maybe they're giving themselves credit for. Right. Or these were truly the best of the bunch, which I trust they were. Um, I liked that there was a variety. I also, these were the winners of like their own categories all in one spot. Right. Um, I didn't do a super deep dive into the galleries themselves, but these were, they were stunning. I would say for my own taste, they all feel a little overprocessed. Right. Even the ones that are a little more journalistic, they're a little punchier and that's okay. Um, but the editorial ones, look very editorial there is a landscape that's it's overworked right. and i you know that's hard because it's a beautiful landscape and like sometimes you do need to introduce not artificial contrast but you do need to to draw get it out to the where, point yeah. yeah sometimes less is more though yes exactly and i think i would have seen these in like an art book or a magazine, you know, I could envision seeing these things, but there's this one even with like the birds. Yes. Uh, and that doesn't look real. That looks like a horror movie. It does look like a horror movie. We might be <laughs> living in it. <laughs> um, that's right. But it, it looks fake. And I think that's what I'm kind of disappointed by because I want to see real photos. If, if I want to go and see graphic design, graphic design, or even like a, advertising photo contest. I think that's a completely different place. And I think it's just confusing with these contests where it's completely open. Yeah. One of my favorite contests, and I want to do this contest too during this season is the PDN contest. PDN which is, has such a cool contest. The advertising like, contest is yep. insane. The creative is yeah. insanely good. And that one image with the, I guess the five dancers or whatever, how many mm -hmm. dancers are, that was the, the placement winner for the open category. Looked like it belonged in PDN. It was yeah. like, that looks like an ad photo. That is mm -hmm. incredible. But right. at the same time, totally not real. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I, I just want to have some sort of distinction over like what we're considering real in our photos too. I mean, there's this, uh, I can't remember. I think it's an egret. I can't remember what that bird is called, but it's diving underwater. It looks like it was created, not photographed. Right. And that's when I start to kind of like, frankly, lose interest in contests because I'm like, what are we rewarding? Right. You can be a brilliant retoucher and you have an amazing skill set that I'll never have. There's no way I, I can, you know, I can retouch like film scans and get things like get the dust out, get right. things looking clean. But the people who can create an entire new realm in a photograph it's amazing but i don't necessarily want to see it in an open contest where there are people who are submitting photos that they made in their frame one shot maybe a little toning i think it's just it's hard to have them in the same contest sure yeah makes sense i'm not the expert on that but that i would love to see contests where they're a little more rigid in and clear right? yeah and clear because I don't know if I submitted this contest and I had a photo that looked really similar to something else here, but it lost to something that looked created in Photoshop. I'd be disappointed and boohoo for me, but I think it's hard when you're up against creations versus photographs. Right. Yeah. So that's it. That's our wrap on the Sony world photography Awards. We did it. It was all beautiful. I, it was. They were really, it's nice to actually have something that makes you think about your work and it make, mm -hmm. it made me think about my work. I can't speak for you, but it made me think like, wow, I could actually win that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't photograph that much. I mean, like I joked earlier, I mostly take fo photos on my phone, on my walks. That's like my thing is putting photos on my Instagram story from my walk of sure. light and color and texture. It, there's really not a whole lot of substance to it. But I was thinking, I was like, oh, I've made some street photos just from my hip on my phone, like 
similar to what I saw, which is exciting for me because I'm like, oh, I could place in a contest. Sure. But then I also wonder what the what is actually being looked for in contests. So uh, overall, given your career, Ben, and where you're going and Mexico. And Mexico. <laughs> yeah, Mexico. <laughs> and uh, literally, folks, that was not a yeah, joke. Yeah, that's not. That's definitely not a joke. real. That's I booked the flight happening. the other day. It's one way. It's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you need a, uh, a caddy or uh, oh. photography assistant, yeah. you know where yeah. to find me. But, yeah. um, Everything, it will be cheap there. Yeah. There's a guest bedroom. I'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, tell me like how this kind of like impacts you and, and, and what you think about it and where you're going with it. With yeah. photo editing? Or photo editing and photography in general, yeah. So I've always, when I was at college at RIT, and I learned that photo editing could be the career, like you could be the person that helps the photographers make the best pictures. I was like, oh damn, that's me. That's what I feel connected to. I loved the collaborative aspect of being able to sit down with a photographer and be like, I think these are the best five photos that you have that are telling this story. If you want to tell this story, maybe it's these five photos and just being able to help guide that narrative. Um, And it's been a it's been a bit of a journey for me to recognize and get past my own imposter syndrome that I do actually know a little bit of what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know. I know. I gotta, you know, it's like a young woman millennial problem. No, I have the same problem. (laughs) That's a human problem. Yeah. (laughs) A human problem. I was just thinking the other day, like, you know, uh, on a project and the the client was like, this is just amazing. And I, and I was thinking to myself, like, go ahead. Do you think that? Because I don't think they're that good, you know, but they were, Imposter it's just, syndrome it's my is my own, like you yeah. know, insecurity. Imposter syndrome is so brutal to anyone in the creative world, but um, I am working on getting out of it and being like, oh, I can be a freelance photo editor. I can have people hire me because I am actually a bit of an expert. <laughs> I'll say a bit, of <laughs> um, but I do know how to guide it. I can sit and listen to myself and talk about this, and I'm like, oh, I'm not just regurgitating information. I know this this is not what I would have done. I think it might've been stronger, but someone else might've been like, no, 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 this totally works out. And it's just a matter of building relationships with photographers, other photo editors, and just going and looking through stuff like this and being able to do a gut check of my own. Like if I was the photographer or if I was the photographer's editor, what would I have guided them to do instead? And what problems can we solve together? So that's always, I mean... I went a little way from the original question, but it's those kind of guiding principles as a photo editor that I think will be able to just carry me through this next transition. Do you wish you could hire that Sony would hire you to run their contest now to get it straight? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I will have a consulting time. So, you know, they could, I might just send them a little bit of an email. They could, (laughs) you know, if Sony is looking for a consultant for their contest, I would be open to that. Right. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, it's one of those hard things too, that, Sometimes it's not, I don't know about Sony in particular. Right. Um, What's the world for, yeah. Yeah. But like sometimes these contests are very low staffed. They have a lot to do. Yeah. There's a lot. How There's many submissions? so much. Yeah. Like you did the Nat alone. Geo annual once, right? Yeah. I worked with the contest that. Uh, How many submissions? This, oh, shoot. Um, it was over 10,000? 10,000 photos. Yeah. Did you look at 10,000 photos? Yeah, I did. That's insane. I feel like I got a fact checked that. Wow. It might have been between. Yeah, I think we broke 10,000. Okay. Ballpark but even like 10K. With, Ballpark yeah. 10K. But even we'll like with your shot assignments, I would look through 10,000. How many a day? Yeah. Uh, about four thousand, four to five thousand. Yeah, and that's all. I had, a, had a, I had a really funny gut check where I was doing a project with a friend, and she sent me about four thousand. They were all different stories, so it was a much different editing process for me that I had to kind of cue my brain back into. But when I, I said that, I was like, "Oh, it's only four thousand. No big deal." She's like, "Excuse me." I was like, "Oh, oh, oh, my my threshold has changed entirely." Right. Um. But yeah, it, back to the submissions. I mean, it's a huge amount of submissions. The good part about contests in that setup is that it's most of the time rolling. So you can kind of look through things as they go. But I wonder, you know, with this particular contest, who is the one that's sifting through the, the weaker ones? It's okay that they're, right. we can call them maybe not the weaker, but they're not as strong. Right. The one where somebody's like, yeah, man, I'm going to submit that. Yeah, Just exactly. Randomly. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it's, 
that's what happens in contests. It's the nature of contests. And sure. I applaud those people with the confidence that are like, I'm just going to do it. Be- hey, man, you can't win the lottery unless you play it. Right, exactly. So th- this is by no means like trashing the people that do that. But I also, if you're if you're spending the money to submit to a contest, I just urge you to make sure that it makes sense for the contest. Like the type of contest, for example, if it's a travel contest, you're not going to submit a portrait of your kid. Right. Maybe you will, but it it's a different... Is it a travel photo? I think, like, if you can just ask that. So, like, with the with the landscape one, all of those winners, those are landscape photos. They right. have like human elements, but it's part of the story. So, like, cool. But if it was a portrait contest, are you going to submit a landscape photo? And people will do that. Right. Don't I don't don't spend your money to do that. That's <laughs> that's when I'm like, no, no, no. You could save that money for a few coffees before you do that. Latte. Mm-hmm, a good latte. Good latte. Mm-hmm. Kristen, where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram at K.E. McNicholas. And my website is KristenMcNicholas.com. There you go. Yeah. I call her Kristen Mac in my head. I don't know why. Kristen Mac. That's funny. When I was a, <laughs> when I was a kid, I had um, a friend call me Kristen Mick. Yeah. And I hated it at the time. I, I and can now, see why, maybe. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, thanks for that and slur. It's, and it's funny because like, when you're a kid, you don't get it. You're like, hmm. But I will say that I've uh, started signing a lot of things KMC, which oh, yeah. I guess would be KMIC. But like, it's, for me, it's the beginning of my last name. I didn't even know it was a slur until later in life, which I guess goes to show how sheltered <laughs> some things can be, or that you just don't understand that there are other slurs in the world. Yes. Um, but yeah, KMC. So, there you go. <laughs> Uh, what a what great, a way to end the show! What a great way to end! Oh, oh by the way, today is International Photography oh, International Podcast Day, not Photography Podcast Day. But there's only yeah <laughs> Photography Podcast as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, uh, it's International Podcast Day, so happy International Podcast yeah, Day! Yeah, my first podcast appearance was on International Podcast Day. Woo! And special thank you to Panama! Yay, Panama! Thank you! All right, that's it. Awesome, we did it. Thanks for listening to the Show Me Podcast with Jeff Livingston. More shows, sponsorship, and donation information are available at showmepodcast.com.